What's up everybody? My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients relieve bloating, gas, and other digestive issues so they can look and feel their best. I previously made videos titled How to Take Betaine HCL with Pepsin and How to Take Digestive Bitters. If you haven't watched them already, you can click right here to see them. The video for today though is going to be about how to take digestive enzymes and then all the key things you need to know about them. In this video, I will discuss the following. What digestive enzymes are, how they work, how you should take them, who may benefit from them, and then finally, who should avoid them. First section is what are digestive enzymes? They are substances that are produced in the body that are specifically responsible for breaking food down into the smallest possible components so they can be absorbed into our body. You can think of them kind of like tiny little pairs of scissors. Although there are many specific digestive enzymes and a long list of them, the three main types of digestive enzymes are amylase, which is specific for digesting carbohydrates, protease, which helps with digesting protein. The third is lipase, which helps digest fats, and this is done with the help of bile. And although it's possible you may be able to find digestive enzymes in different forms, pretty much every single one that I've personally found has come in a pill form, whether it be a capsule or a tablet. Okay, now for how digestive enzymes actually work. As I mentioned before, they do function just like tiny little pairs of scissors. Let me give you this one example to show what digestive enzymes actually do. Let's say you ate a baked potato during dinner this evening. In order for your body to actually gain the energy from the baked potato, it has to convert that potato from a starch, which is a very long chain of sugar molecules all strung together, and it has to digest it all the way down into a single sugar molecule or molecule molecule of glucose. This takes a lot of effort for the body to actually do, which seems like it would be a bad thing, but for a lot of reasons I won't go into in this video, uh, mostly involving blood sugar, it can actually be a really good thing. Having your body need to do all this work just to digest a food to get energy from it, on the surface it seems like it would be a really bad thing, but in actuality it's actually a good thing most of the time mostly due to blood sugar type reasons. Uh, for the purpose and scope of this video, I won't get any more into the explanation of that. The process of breaking down this starch into a sugar starts in the mouth with proper chewing and saliva. Saliva actually contains amylase, and this would be the first portion where a little bit of digestion of the potato would actually happen. Next, the potato, which hopefully is in a bit more of a mashed consistency since you chewed it well, enters the stomach, where stomach acid continues to digest the potato and break down that long chain of starch even further to get it closer to that single molecule of sugar that we need for energy. After this, the potato, which is decently digested by now, makes its way into the small intestine. And this is where the majority of the digestive enzymes and the function of the digestive enzymes takes place. Any remaining links that are holding these single molecules of sugar or glucose together are hopefully here cut by these digestive enzymes and the body is able to absorb this sugar or glucose and use it for energy. Next up is how you should be taking digestive enzymes. Depending on where you look or who you talk to, there's a few different ways that people say you should be taking them. I've seen some data that says take them 15 to 20 minutes before meals. Some say take with the first bite of food and some just say you can take in the middle of the meal or take with a meal. There's not a general correct answer of when to take it. If you did any of these three that I aforementioned, you probably would get the proper benefit from taking the digestive enzyme. The key thing would be to definitely take it around meal time though. If you took them hours before or after a meal, you're really not gonna be gaining the benefit of the digestive enzymes. I typically take mine in the middle of the meal because I take my other supplements in the middle of the meal as well and taking them only one time around mealtime in general it just helps me to take the dose and not forget to do so. The one other consideration to take into account is if your digestive enzyme is mixed with a betaine HCL with pepsin. This is pretty common with digestive supplements that they'll lump the betaine HCL with a digestive enzyme and if this is the case for you definitely make sure to take this digestive enzyme product with the betaine in the middle of the meal. In the previous video I talked about how to take betaine. That one you definitely need to take right in the middle 
middle of the meal to prevent a potential heartburn symptom. I'd recommend just doing what the bottle says for the specific product. A lot of these digestive enzyme products just say to take with a meal or take with food. In this case, if you don't have any other factors to consider, I would just take it with the first bite of your meal. Some people who could benefit from taking digestive enzymes, uh, if you have lower abdominal bloating, which is kind of at the belly button or even a little bit below, this is because if you have low digestive enzymes and food builds up in the intestines, this is the exact area where gas would build up and cause that bloating. If you have diabetes mellitus type 2 or even prediabetes, something that often happens in these circumstances is you actually have fatty liver and fatty pancreas. A large portion of the digestive enzymes are actually created in the pancreas, so therefore if you have fatty pancreas, the pancreas is not going to be able to do its job as well and produce these digestive enzymes. Celiac disease is another condition where digestive enzymes are definitely going to be helpful. In addition to the pancreas producing digestive enzymes that I mentioned before, the small intestines is also responsible for producing a good portion of your digestive enzymes. There's a lot of damage that's done to the intestinal lining when you have celiacs, therefore supplementing with digestive enzymes can be a great benefit for you. And you know I always love to talk about SIBO, but with SIBO there's not the same amount of damage to the lining of the small intestines that celiacs has, but just having that overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestines can cause damage to the lining of the small intestines, and therefore the amount of digestive enzymes that you're producing in the small intestines can be lower. Digestive enzymes can move food quicker through the intestines with some people. Therefore, if you're somebody that is struggling with diarrhea or loose stools, it may be a good idea to avoid taking these. Or if you are taking them and have diarrhea and loose stools, you may wanna do a trial to see if you stop the digestive enzyme, if this symptom goes away. Cramping is also a possibility, and this is more likely if you take high doses of digestive enzymes. In conclusion, digestive enzymes can be a helpful solution if you have a digestive issue that you're currently working through. Although I'm not aware of any negative effects of taking digestive enzymes long-term, once your digestive problems have resolved, you're feeling better and you've addressed the root cause, it only makes sense to try to taper off them. If a supplement's no longer needed and things are optimized without it, might as well try to discontinue it and not take so many pills each day. That is everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I post a new full-length video every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time, and I post YouTube shorts most days of the week now as well. If you have any comments or questions for me, please drop them below in the comment section, and I'll see you next week.